In this video, we're going to look at applications of trig functions. Let's start by reading through the question. A rocket takes off vertically at a distance of 6,400 meters from an observer. If, when the angle of elevation is 40 degrees, the angle is changing at 5 degrees per second, how fast is the rocket ascending? Let's see if we can draw a diagram to organize some of the information in the problem. So we've got an observer. Let's say here's our observer right here. The rocket is taking off vertically at a distance of 6,400 meters from the observer. So let's say here's the ground, 6,400 meters away was the place that the rocket was launched from and the rocket is traveling vertically in this problem. So, so rocket's path looks like this. Let's just draw a little picture of our rocket here. Okay, let's say roughly that looks like a rocket. There's the rocket's path. And we want to know if when the angle of the elevation is 40 degrees, well, let's draw on angle of elevation. So that would be measured from the ground um, and we're looking at the sight line from the observer up to the rocket. So there's our angle there, angle of elevation. Let's call it theta. Um, so if when theta is 40 degrees, theta is changing at a specific rate, we want to know how fast is the rocket ascending. Well, to answer this question here, we're going to need to keep track of the rocket's vertical position. So let's say this vertical distance that the rocket has traveled. Let's call it x. You could call it y or give it any other name that you like, but let's say x in this problem. So we've got two variables. We've got the rocket's height and we've got the angle of elevation. And if we rephrase the question in terms of mathematical quantities, we want to know how fast is x changing. So in other words, we want to find dx by dt. Um, given some information. So when theta is 40 degrees and if the rate of change of theta is this value given in the question. So if we talk about rate of change of theta we're talking about a derivative with respect to time. So trying to find the value of dx by dt when d theta by dt is 5 degrees per second. Okay, so we've got all our information now from the problem either drawn into our diagram or written down beside the diagram here. What we have here is a related rates problem. So our two variables, x and theta, are functions of t, meaning they're both changing over time. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we go through our calculation. First thing we need to get started with the calculation is we need some type of equation that relates our two variables. So some relationship between x and theta. Well, if we think about the angle theta here, um, a good way to incorporate x and the 6400 would be to talk about the opposite and the adjacent side. So we could say tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that would be x over 6400. And that way we've got theta, x, and 6400 all incorporated to this, into this single equation. Now, because our functions, or our variables, x and theta, are functions of time, we want to take derivatives of both sides of this equation with respect to t. So we want to take d by dt of both sides. That is our standard procedure in a related rates problem. So let's start with the left side. And we need to take the derivative of tan theta with respect to t. 
Now this is going to involve the chain rule because tan theta, as it appears here, is a function of theta. So if we take the derivative with respect to theta, we get secant squared theta, but we then need to multiply by d theta by dt. Okay, so this part here is really coming from the fact that if we take a derivative of a function with respect to t, and our function in this case is tan theta, so it involves theta, uh, what we'd have to do is take df by d theta times d theta by dt. So that is just an example of the chain rule. On the right side, we're going to have to take the derivative of x over 6400 with respect to t. So we'll first take the derivative with respect to x. We'd have 1 over 6400, and then we need to multiply by dx by dt. So again, if you want to think of a formula here about how this chain rule is working, let's say this right side, this x over 6400, is called g, for example. So we want to take dg by dt. Well, we could take dg by dx, because g is really a function of x, and then multiply by dx by dt. Okay, so that's the um, formula approach if you want to think of the chain rule that way. Uh, it's fine to just write down secant squared theta times d theta by dt, if you can visualize that. And on the right side, we've got 1 over 6400 times dx by dt. So now, if we keep in mind what we're trying to do, we are trying to find dx by dt. So let's see if we can rearrange this equation a little bit. We've got dx by dt is equal to, well, if we multiply both sides by 6400, we've got 6400 secant squared d theta by dt. And in terms of the calculation here, eventually we're going to have to go to our calculator and get a value out of this. Um, and our calculator, remember, does not have a secant x button. So we just need to remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and we can rewrite this as dx by dt is equal to 6400 divided by cos squared theta times d theta by dt. So we're just doing this step here for the purpose of using our calculator. Now if we recall the information from earlier in the question, we wanted to find dx by dt at the moment when theta was equal to 40 degrees and also when theta was changing at a rate of 5 degrees per second. So we'll have to think about how we want to plug these values into the problem. Well, if we think about dx by dt, we're talking about how quickly a distance is changing. So we really want units like meters per second. In other words, we do not want any degrees coming up in our problem. So when we think about this d theta by dt here, in fact, 5 degrees per second is not the right units for us to be using. So degrees per second is going to cause degrees to come up in our answer, um, and that's not, that's not going to be good in terms of the units that we're looking for. So let's convert the 5 degrees to radians. Well, if we wanted to change 5 degrees per second into instead some number of radians per second, let's remember that pi radians is the same thing as 180 degrees. And that way the degrees will cancel out. And also 5 divides nicely into 180. So we'll just be left with 36 in the denominator here. So really, if we clean this up a little bit, it looks like pi over 36. And that's radians per second. So remember, radians are um, just measured in terms of real numbers. So for a calculation like this, where we want to get meters per second out at the end, um, radians would be an appropriate way of measuring our angle. So with that, we should be able to plug in. dx by dt, then, is going to be 6400 divided by cos 
of 40 degrees squared. Now it's fine to have degrees in here because remember cos of 40 degrees is a number. So because there's a cosine function or a trig function applied to that angle, we're getting um, a number out and we don't necessarily need to have this in radians. But we will need our calculator in degree mode <clears throat> when we do that part of the calculation. Um, and just to finish off this line here, we'll need to multiply by d theta by dt, which we said was pi over 36 radians per second. Our units here are coming from the 6400 was measured in meters, and um, we had seconds here from the d theta by dt. So another way of thinking about the units, probably a more intuitive way, is just to think about what dx by dt is. X measured in meters, time measured in seconds. So we, we've got a measurement in meters per second. Now this is not going to be a particularly nice number, so let's just go to our calculator and evaluate this value. So we'll do 6400 divided by cos squared of 40 degrees. We'll make sure that the calculator is in degree mode because it's receiving degrees inside this cosine function. And then we'll multiply by pi over 36, which is just a number. And that way we'll get a nice answer in meters per second. So it comes out to about 952 meters per second.